once unleashed, his ferocity and strength are unstoppable. You, you don't mean... To defeat a man of iron, you need something stronger, right? Yes. Titanium Man. I thought we finished him off at Magnetogors. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we will explore the comic book origins of Titanium Man. As with most comic book characters, there are often reimaginings and different versions to a character's past. We have chosen primarily to follow the storyline which unfolded in 1965's Tales of Suspense No. 69-71 which was expanded upon in 1987's The X-Men vs. The Avengers No. 1 and 1988's Iron Man No. 229. Titanium Man was one of the many communist villains that populated the Marvel Universe during the 1960s. Even when not wearing Titanium Man's armor, Boris Bulski stood at an impressive 7 foot 1 and weighed 425 pounds. With the armor, he stood 8 foot 9 and weighed close to half a ton. His own impressive strength was enhanced by the armor, which also enabled him to fly, shoot force blasts and eye beams, and propel special entrapment rings. Clearly enough to be a match for Iron Man himself. I'm the new and improved Iron Man. Call me Titanium Man. <laughs> Titanium Man made his massive presence known in a three part story in 1965. Bolski the Merciless had been appointed commissar of a prison camp in Siberia, placed there because even the Soviet brass was scared of him. Believing he was meant for greater things, Bolski forced the imprisoned scientists at the camp to create a massive suit of titanium armor. Wearing this, he would publicly challenge and hope to defeat Iron Man. Bolski believed that a victory over one of Russia's most hated enemies would earn him the respect he felt he deserved. With that in mind, and taking the new name of Titanium Man, Bolski dared Iron Man to meet him for a televised battle. Titanium Man! That challenge couldn't have come at a worse time for Iron Man. His weak heart had been giving him trouble lately. God, they're running out quick. He was developing a new miniaturized transistor that he hoped would help, but it hadn't been perfected yet. Nevertheless, he accepted his foe's invitation. My name is Tony Stark and I'm not afraid of you. I know you're a coward. Once they met, Iron Man was taken aback by Titanium Man's incredible size and strength. While his armor was less sophisticated than Iron Man's, some of its armaments were quite effective. It also didn't help matters that the villain wasn't fighting fair, and it really didn't help when the hero discovered that he had left his life-saving transistor back in his hotel room. Oh! Iron Man asked Happy Hogan to locate the missing transistor, which he did. However, while delivering it to Iron Man, Happy was hit by a deadly stray blast from Titanium Man. Believing that his most loyal friend had been killed, Iron Man returned to the fray with renewed fury. Now working at his full power thanks to the transistor, Iron Man made short work of the titanium terror. Even better, Old Shell had discovered that Happy was not dead, although he was badly injured. While Boris was left to face his disapproving superiors, Iron Man switched back to his Tony Stark identity to face his own problems, which included a very angry Pepper Potts. Over the years, Titanium Man's armor was redesigned to make it less bulky. And, for a period starting in 1987, that new armor was worn by another person, the mutant known as Gremlin. Unlike Bolski, Gremlin was quite short and slight of stature. However, he used his abilities to design a suit that did not depend on the physical strength of the wearer. Gremlin's tenure in the green armor didn't last long, however. He was killed in a fight with Iron Man in 1988. When Bolski resumed the Titanium Man identity, he eventually used the new armor, which he continued to update as needed. I did it! No While Titanium Man's armor may not have been as well made or ingenious as Tony Stark's armor, it nevertheless was a formidable weapon. It is I, with the sins of a lifetime to amend. I, alone. Its visual appeal made it a natural for use in other media, and the character even made an impression on Paul McCartney. The former Beatle felt inspired to write a song that paired Titanium Man with another Marvel villain, Magneto. Not too shabby a tribute. Are you a fan of Titanium Man? Another Iron Man! How many of you are there? For more comic book origins, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.